Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandra and I'm a nurse practitioner. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the Renee and Weber hearing test. So these are both screening hearing tests used in primary care. If there is concern for hearing loss, these are not diagnostic. If there is concern for hearing loss after performing the Renee and Weber test, then the patient should be referred to ENT for formal hearing evaluation. So the Renee and Weber test should always be done together when you are screening for hearing loss. So to perform the Renee and Weber test, you will need a 512 Hertz tuning fork, and it says it right on there, 512. 512 Hertz is ideal for performing these hearing tests. There are other pitch tuning forks such as 128 Hertz or 256 Hertz, but the 512 Hertz tuning fork is ideal for the Renee and Weber test. So there are three main types of hearing loss. There is sensory neural, which is a problem with the auditory nerve or the cochlea. And then there is conductive hearing loss. So conductive hearing loss occurs when sound waves cannot pass through the outer and middle ear. And there are two types of conductive hearing loss, air conduction and bone conduction. And then there is mixed hearing loss, which is a combination of sensory neural hearing loss and conductive hearing loss. So we're going to start with the Weber test, which evaluates for unilateral hearing loss or hearing loss in one ear. Okay, so to activate the tuning fork, you can strike it on the elbow or you can strike it on the knee. You don't wanna strike the tuning fork on a hard object such as a table because that can damage the tuning fork and it can produce overtones, which can affect the test results. So both the Weber and Renee test should be performed in a quiet room. Okay, so for the Weber test, after you activate the tuning fork, you're going to place it midline either on the top of the head here or on the forehead. And you're going to ask the patient if they hear the tone equally in both ears or if it's heard louder in one ear. A normal Weber test can be heard equally in both ears. So in sensory neural hearing loss, the sound will laterize to the unaffected ear, which means the tone will be heard louder in the good ear. If there is conductive hearing loss, the sound laterizes to the affected ear, which means the tone will be heard better in the poor ear or the one having the hearing loss. And so I can hear the tones equally in both ears, which is a normal Weber test. Okay, so next we're going to do the Renee test, which evaluates for conductive hearing loss in one ear. After performing the test on one ear, you do it again on the other ear. Okay, so to perform the Renee test, you're going to activate your tuning fork. Be careful not to touch these prongs once the tuning fork is activated. Just hold it by the stem here. You're going to place it on the mastoid bone and ask the patient when they can no longer hear the sound. At that point, you're going to move the tuning fork, hold it about one to two centimeters from the outer ear and ask them again when they can no longer hear the sound. So in a normal Renee test, which is also called a positive Renee test, air conduction is approximately twice as long as bone conduction. Okay, so I can no longer hear the tone, so I'm going to bring it to the outer ear. and now I can no longer hear the sound. And that would be a normal Renee test in my right ear. Now we're going to do the left ear. So I'm gonna give my elbow a break and I'm gonna activate it on my knee. We're gonna hold it on the mastoid bone. So I can no longer hear it, so I'm going to move it to the outer ear. So the left ear is also normal or a positive Renee test, which means that air conduction is approximately two times that of bone conduction. So in an abnormal or negative Renee test, when you move the tuning fork in front of the ear, the patient will not be able to hear that tone because the patient cannot hear sound conducted through the air after the tuning fork is moved away from the mastoid bone. So in an abnormal Renee test, bone conduction is greater than air conduction. Okay, you guys, so that is the Renee and Weber screening hearing test. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. 
All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.